In this video, I am going to be talking to you about min, max, and clamp, which just let you do some CSS magic. We're going to start off with min, we're going to go into max, and then my favorite of all of them is the clamp, which lets you set minimum, maximum font sizes. And check this out. Here at the small screen size, this looks all right. You know, we have our font sizes all set up. I'm going to increase this a little bit. You can see the font sizes are both scaling up at the same time. And then the body size is now stopped growing. And as we keep going, my title at one point, there we go, has also stopped growing. And I did both of those with one line of CSS each. Just one line, it's super exciting. I'm so happy about this. We have a minimum and maximum font size. That's crazy. Hello, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And I'm so excited for min, max, and clamp. I've had my eye on them for a little while now, but I haven't really dove into them because I didn't think browser support was very good for them until I found out it actually was. And uh, I got an email from Firefox saying that it was part of the newest release. And so I was like, okay, if it's in Firefox now, have the other browsers got on board? What's going on? Wait, everybody's on on this? Um, I know Internet Explorer is not. I will mention again at the end, uh, but I do have another video that looks at how you could build in support for Internet Explorer if you really needed it. Or maybe not support, but you could build in um, a fallback for Internet Explorer. But this to me is super exciting. Um, so minimum, maximum are really cool. I think there's a lot of really good use cases for them that are going to let us write a bit less code. Uh, but then at the end, I'm going to be looking at clamp with the whole font size thing because having a minimum font size, a maximum font size to me, I, that's something I've been waiting for for so long and the fact that we can start using that is super exciting. Let's go and check it out. So the very first thing that we're going to be doing here is jumping into VS Code and we're going to be looking at the min first. Uh, now with min and max, they're a little bit backwards in how I normally think about these things, but um, they do make sense in the long run. So uh, what I'm going to do is start by jumping into my content here, which is the white box that we have right there. And you can see I've set a width of 70%. So I'm just going to open up my dev tools and pop on responsive mode. Now responsive mode in Firefox is on this side. If you're in Chrome, it has the exact same icon, but on that side. And that lets me resize things. So we can see that my content right here is 70% of the viewport. And as that changes, it shrinks and grows like you'd expect it to. Now, one very common thing to do is setting a width and setting a, not max, but a max width of, and I'm going to make it pretty small here just for demo purposes, but a max width of 600 pixels. So then it's going to shrink. But when I grow up at one point, it's going to lock and it's not going to grow anymore. So it's locked in at that 600 pixels um, as a maximum size. Now, what min lets us do is it lets us write all of this, but in one line of code pretty much. So what I'm going to do here is take off all of that and I'm going to write min and put in open and close parentheses and leave it just like that. And then inside of here, uh, we can put two or more values. It can get a little bit weird if you're going beyond two values, but you uh, let's start with two because that's the easiest to understand. So I'm going to put 500 pixels and we'll stick with my 70% and we'll hit save on that. So what this is now doing is it's looking for the smallest of those two values and it's going to choose whichever one is smaller at any given time. So when I'm at a small screen size, it's using the percentage of 70% because right now 70% here is smaller than the 500 pixels. But if I grow my screen big enough, at one point 500 pixels will be bigger than 70%. So it's choosing the 500 instead. Again, 500 now is smaller than what this would compute out to. So whichever the smaller one is, which is why it's called min. So it's choosing the minimum out of the two is how you can think about it. And as I said, that is exactly in this case equivalent, or as far as I can tell anyway, it's equivalent to writing a width of 70% and having a max width of, in this case, 500 pixels. So like writing this one line is equivalent to writing those two lines right there. And to me, that's really handy. I like writing less if I can. So that's really, really awesome that we can do that. Now I did mention we can write more values in there. I'm not gonna jump into that quite yet. Let's get max first. And for the max, um, max is the opposite. So here I'm just gonna switch min to max and hit save. And I think now what it's gonna do is you're gonna see it's whichever, it's using the maximum value, whichever of these two values is bigger. So what's bigger, 500 pixels or 70%. So it's locked in at 500 pixels. 
But if I grow bigger at one point, it's going to start using that 70% in there. So at one point, it does make the switch over. So we could come in here and give this three values, but three values are really weird because it does take the smallest of the three values. Um, so just for fun, let's just try doing 100 pixels, or not the smallest, the biggest in this case, 10%, uh, uh, 10 might be a bit small, say 20%. And let's say we'll do height maybe. Can we do height? Let's say we do 50 viewport height and hit save. If I know this or understand this right, it should actually base the width of it on the height right now. So you can see as I'm going up and down on the height of my viewport, it's actually changing the width because the height right now is the biggest of those values. And as soon as my height gets to a small point, small enough point, it should stop shrinking it. <laughs> Maybe it's because I made that too big. Uh, let's go with like 400 pixels here. And we'll see. So there, this is working, but then all of a sudden it gets to the 400 pixels there. So it's actually using a combination of them. And if I go wide enough at one point, um, we're, you know, I can't do it now, but at one point we could probably get this guy to kick into. So at one point it actually start getting wider here. It's doing it based on the 400 pixels. And if I go tall enough, now it's actually using my height. Would I actually use that in the real world? I really doubt it. Um, but I just want to show you that you can use multiple values in there. So you might think of a good use case for that. If you can think of one, uh, please let me know down below. Um, if you read the specifications as well, it actually recommends a little bit depending on the use case. Uh, but say you do something like this. For this, you could actually set up a max here as well. And you can nest the max inside of there, which is kind of weird, but you can do it. And you can also do math in here. So you don't need to throw a calc like that. If you do want to do math, you can just do your math in here like you might do inside of a calc already. So if I come in here and I say my minimum is, let's say 500 pick, uh, we'll do 500 pixels plus, uh, I don't know, 10% comma. And here I'm just going to do, uh, let's just do 400 pixels. I, I'm going to keep it small. So we know, or actually four, let's do six. So it's always going to use the smaller. So it's probably always going to use this one. Um, so 500 pixels plus 10%. So you can actually see it is growing and shrinking a little bit as I move things there. Let's make this a little bit bigger just so it exaggerates things a little bit. And I'll make this a lot bigger just so we know it's always going to use the math expression I've put there. Uh, that's a bit too big because it's actually going off the screen a little bit. 20%. There we go. So it should be 500 pixels. And you can see as that's growing, it is expanding a little bit. Or as I go smaller, it is shrinking a little bit. So again, this isn't the exact use case I would use for it. But just to show you, you can include math. If you're doing pluses or minuses, uh, you do actually, I think for any of the math, um, you do need to have a space on both sides of the units here. So if you did it with like a plus 20, it's not going to work because you can, it's counting that as one unit. So you just have to make sure that you do include the space there for it to work if you want to do math inside of your min or your max. Um, so for now, actually, let's set this back to a width of 70% just for simplicity's sake. And we're going to move on to looking at clamp. Now, actually, we could look at clamp. Now, we're going to do it just with our text. Um, and I'm going to do it first with my paragraph down here. And actually, I set this up for something else, but we're going to come back to that. Um, so I'm going to set a background on here, background of light blue, just so we can see the whole size of my paragraph. And I'm also going to come into here and set this to have, uh, let's give it a width of 50%. So we can just see that it's now at 50% of the total width of the parent. The parent grows or shrinks. It's always just sitting at 50%. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set a clamp. So clamp is written the same way. It's the word clamp and then open and close parentheses. <laughs> um, but then in the parentheses, you have to give it three values. This one only works with three values. If you do more or less, it will not work. It's always a minimum, a maximum, and a ideal size, the size that you'd like it to be. So this is a little bit like setting a min width, a max width, and a width on it, all three in one, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So if I come and set a clamp here, oh, just really fast, actually, on your min, uh, the min and the max, just if ever you're using them, it doesn't matter which value comes first. You don't have to go smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest. It's just always going to choose either the maximum value or the minimum value, depending on which one you are using. Um, for clamp, I'm going to come in here and say that we're going to set a minimum of 300 pixels. And we're going to set a middle ground here of 50%. So we're going to keep the ideal at 50%. 
and we're gonna set and we're gonna set a maximum of let's just mix our units even more uh, we'll set 20 rem on there so it wants to be 50% but it has a minimum size of 300 pixels and actually uh, these values are gonna be a bit too big so I'm gonna drop that down to 200 I think there we go so you can see here it is growing and shrinking with this window and I'm gonna make this window a little bit bigger for this um, it's shrinking here but at one point it stops shrinking so when it hits the 200 uh, width it's stopping to shrink because that's its minimum value here it's starting to grow it's starting to grow and when we hit 20 rem it stops growing even though that gets bigger so ideally it's at 50 percent we've created this middle ground but it has a minimum width and a maximum width now personally i'm not the biggest fan of setting up the minimum widths on items minimum widths they can cause a lot of issues when you're going to mobile you have to re you know overwrite them stuff like that so i don't know how often i would use clamp for widths i'm sure there are some use cases that i will start finding but what i would do here instead is actually i think it could be a very good use case for font sizes so one thing people like to do for font size is set something like three viewport width and that's way too big <laughs> let's start with two um, so there we go. That's not too bad of a font size. And if you don't know a lot about viewport units, I do have another video that does do a pretty deep, big deep dive into them. And in there, one of the things I mentioned is that you can do something like this, where you set your font size and viewport widths. And the nice thing with that is as your page grows and shrinks, your text grows and shrinks. So it becomes very fluid and people love this idea of fluid design and all of that. But the problem is you can see at small screen sizes, it's becoming unreadable. And there's another big issue with font sizes when they're set in viewport units. And I'm going to turn off responsive mode here for a second, just so we can see what it is. Um, so on a website, say somebody gets there and the uh, let's set this to one viewport width and it's way too small. And uh, this is just for my example here, but it's way too small. So the person who visits the site tries to zoom in on the page and they're zooming in and you notice the font size isn't changing because the font size is only related to the width of the viewport. That's a big issue. That's <laughs> like person, the person will leave the site if they find it's too small. So it's really strongly recommended not to do something like that. Now there is an alternative where you can wrap a calc around here. So I could say two viewport width comma, um, uh, comma plus one rem, let's just say that's uh, way too big. <laughs> one plus 0.5 will probably make a lot more sense. So it looks kind of big even now, <laughs> maybe 0.5 plus 0.5. Um, so what this is doing, oh, we're also zoomed into 240%. There we go, that's a little better. <laughs> I'll go with one plus a 0.5 rem. So this is setting it to one viewport width plus 0.5 rem. So the 0.5 becomes like this baseline. So now if I zoom in, it's actually going to get bigger because the rem unit is increasing in size with the zoom. Or if I zoom out, the rem unit you know, is getting smaller. So you can actually zoom in and zoom out. And with this, the nice thing is with responsive mode on, it will still create fluid text. But overall, there's still a bit of an issue with this where you can see it is still getting really small at small screen sizes. And you don't want people having to pinch and zoom uh, when they're on a mobile experience because your body's font size is too small. So for now, I'm going to turn that off. We're going to come up to the title and do the same thing here. So font size clamp. And in my clamp, we will set a minimum I'm going to set a minimum of two rem, a middle ground of, let's try five viewport width and a maximum of five rem. The smallest it's ever going to get here is the two rem. And at one point that's going to start increasing with my viewport unit. So you can see here it's locked in, it's locked in. Then all of a sudden it starts increasing. And then when you get to the really big sizes at one point, there you go, you can see it's off screen. You can, my, my viewport's a bit bigger than the recording area on my screen right now. But you can see that at one point, as that keeps increasing, it is locking into a maximum size. Now, just for fun, if I did my font size with just a five viewport width instead, just to give you an idea of what could happen, um, this point it's looking the same, but at small sizes, it sort of gets really tiny for a title. And at the big sizes, at one point, it starts getting really, really, really big. And so it's nice that we can limit it all. And, you know, this is effectively creating a minimum font size, a maximum font size, and it's automatically filling in the middle. You may be going, well, what about zooming and all of that? Let's check it out and see what happens. Uh, but at one point, I do believe the font size will actually change. And I don't see it changing right now. And I'm zooming to extremes. Hmm. Let's try it out on down here. 
Uh, so font size clamp, and this one will do one RAM, comma, 1.5 viewport width, which is a bit big, and we'll stop it at three, uh, 1.5, 1.25 RAM. I don't know if that's actually going to work at all. Let's try it out. Uh, so if I shrink it down, it's okay. That's staying at one RAM. If I go bigger at one point, it will start increasing and then it locks in. Um, let's make this something like that maybe would actually be better. So it's going to increase and then it locks in and then it starts shrinking back down. Let's bring this like this. Actually, we can see it's increasing right around here. It's starting to get bigger. And then that body font size has locked in and then again, the same thing that way. And then it's all going to lock in. Now, if I turn this off and I zoom in, you can see the font sizes. Oh, both font sizes are actually zooming in or then on my shrinking, both font sizes will zoom out as well. It does create a little bit of a middle ground where we're not seeing it. And the issue before, I think when it was just my title was that I left the uh, responsive mode on, which sort of changes how the zoom behaviors are working. So here with the responsive mode off, when I zoom in, we're getting a better idea um, of how that's actually working. So I find that really, really cool. It's keeping some of our um, accessibility by letting us zoom in and zoom out and the font sizes will adjust. It's letting us set a maximum and minimum font size, which to me is absolutely amazing. I'm so excited by that. And overall, I think it works really, really well. It's something that I'm very excited about and I haven't explored a lot yet. If you have done that and you have some cool uses cases for it, please post them down in the comments below to share with everybody else. As a really quick aside, if you want to use this in more projects, you want to use it, but you're worried about the backwards compatibility. Um, I do have a video that looks at feature queries, which are the at support thing. You can, the video doesn't talk specifically about this, but you could definitely use that in supporting this. You could set like default font sizes and then include this for better experiences for most people who are on the more modern browsers. So you can check that one out. The link to it will be down in the description below. A really big thank you for watching. If you have not yet subscribed and you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. Also, just in case you don't know, I do have a Discord community where other devs chat about Devi stuff and all the other stuff and just hang out. And lately it has exploded. There's tons of people in there. So if you'd like to join us, there is a link to it down in the description below where you can just click on it. It's going to bring you right in and you can come and hang out with us and ask questions and all of that type of stuff. If you do have questions, it's a lot better to ask over there than in the YouTube comments because it's hard to talk about code in the comment section of a YouTube video. Thank you very much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this one. I'm super excited about this and definitely plan on starting to use it a little bit more now that it is supported pretty much across the board almost. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you to my patrons for all your support every single month. It is greatly appreciated. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.